Hyperloop uh, futuristic transportation system has come a long way after Elon Musk, an ent entrepreneur, proposed a fifth mode of transportation in 2012. Uh, the idea of this transportation is to carry commuters through a tube at a speed in excess of uh, 700 miles per hour. Uh, this concept uh, has drawn a lot of attention from inventors and investors as well around the world uh, to be part of the development of this transport system. While it may have, it may have seemed like uh, imaginary, uh, there are still a lot of reasons to be doubtful about this, uh, the future of this kind of uh, transportation. Well, let's just get more on this. And joining us on the program is uh, Oluwa Tobi Oyinlolai Transportation System Analyst, <laughs> I believe. Um, an embedded system professional and a major contributor to avionics section of the R Loop project. So let me just start. What does all that mean, all this technology? Just tell me about, you know, this system that you belong to first. Okay, thank you. Well, it has been really great. Yes. Um, Hyperloop majorly is one of change the transport system all over the world, whereby you could travel from Lagos to Abuja within 30 minutes. So the idea came in whereby we have to compete, you know, with the likes of MIT, Cornell, or, you know, schools in the United States. So for our group, our loop, we came across uh, an advantage whereby we have to compete with this kind of people. So we met on the internet and from there we kickstart the project. So I'm the only Africa, you know, representing the Hyperloop. So it's just to make the world better and also to make our transport movement faster and even cheaper. So that's the whole idea of okay, Hyperloop. Okay, so what, what, what does the process involve? How can you make a journey of eight hours, well, you know, be done under 30 minutes? Okay, so there's some technology we used uh, called levation system whereby the system had to levitate. It won't uh, sit like a general train. So, and uh, there are some battery packed inside the uh, Hyperloop system whereby we don't have to use power rail like the general one that is available in China and the US. So this makes it more differently than any other transport system all over the world. So, well, because it's cheaper, because it's more compact compared to all other systems all over the world. Right, just as you have contributed to research of uh you know, the Hyperloop, what can you do to help, you know, other youths be part of this innovation? Uh, I, I've been trying some really amazing work, you know, in order to teach electrical students how to build this project because a lot of people that finish from school feel they could just work with big companies. They could lay their hands on some interesting projects. So I've been taking some time to teach them on how to build this Hyperloop project too and also to get involved with this competition of Elon Musk in order to have international exposure, it's very important. Okay, so where do you see, what's the future of this project? Where do you see it happening? You know, who are you collaborating with? Who's helping you well, with all it, of this? Well, it's actually happening already in the US. Okay. Uh, Elon Musk is building tunnels already. And um, well, I think in Africa, it's gonna, it's gonna be too late, I believe very soon, but we are not, 100% there yet, we're not there yet. So we're just trying to adapt to the kind of technology we have right now. And so how safe is this form of transportation? Well, it's pretty safe. Like, all the technology are in place whereby elevation system, proportion, you know, all these design are very, very perfect. So it makes it more safe. How can Africa, you know, take advantage of this? Uh, and Nigeria, of course, take advantage of this opportunity. You said that it's already at work in a country like the United States, yeah. where we know the systems work. Yeah. But, you know, in Africa, it's yeah. different. There's yeah. a lot of doubt and there's a lot of concerns. And how can we do this? And probably not the political will. So how can Nigeria and other African countries take advantage of this opportunities? Have you, you know, perhaps made a presentation to, like, maybe the government authorities to, you know, help you out here? Yeah, I think uh, it would be very amazing if America, Africa can took up this opportunity because we are even in the second mode of transport system. So, and we are presently in the fifth mode of transport system. So 
Africa, if we could tap into this, it will really change a lot of things for us. And the best way we could do that is government should look into this as a real project, not to invest in holding this technology for transport system. So I, I really believe it's the way to go. Okay, so tell me, what's, uh, what's the cost of you know, doing well, it, all of this. You know, I, I ask you that because already, you know, the government spends a lot of money in yep. trying to get the transport uh, up and doing. You, you know where we are with our railway, yeah. especially in Nigeria. Yep. So how much, you know, with all this cost, is it something that the government will look at and say, you know what, let's put that aside for now? Or is it something that is really going to be, you know, cut down a lot of costs in the transportation system? Well, it's a lot of billion dollars project, so, mm -hmm. and... Um, it's really a lot of money, you know, to build tunnels within states. But long run, it's going to help transport system in Africa generally. All right. Thank you so much uh, for that, uh, for your thoughts and for coming to yeah. Network Africa. Thank you so much. All right. And thank you also for staying tuned to the program. That's where we end it today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jocker Rogers. Bye for now.